the, the first question I would ask you um, is how, how did this project uh, come together? Um, because it's uh, unusual, you, you go to two different countries, you explore a theme. Yeah, you, usually my, my works start from, from an aspect, a form in the cinema language that I want to explore. So it's, it's not very common this, or it's common for artists, not so much for female filmmakers or documentary filmmakers. So here the two countries appear after, no? So at the beginning, I, I was exploring uh, the idea of the invisible and how cinema reflect about the, the invisible or how the invisible can, can be shown uh, in cinema and, or how can you work with the tools of cinema around this concept and uh, so I was during some years I was dealing with this question and suddenly I I, I come with the, I discovered this book the Tibetanian book of the death uh, that is the uh, um, a guide a Buddhist guide of what you are going to find in the afterlife, uh, step by step, chronologically. And I thought it, it was, uh, as I'm also interested in, in how different cultures uh, reflect uh, about death and the afterlife and how, which myths and legends appear from this uh, problem or this thing of questioning what can be after this, no? Uh, so these two things that I was interested in connected here. I thought it was it could be really interesting to make a a film with the eyes closed, uh, exploring this very literal idea of the invisible, uh, and this idea of the of a trip during the film with with the audience with the eyes closed connected with this trip. Uh, through the bardo, the the afterlife in the Buddhist concept, I thought it could be really really interesting uh, experience as a, as an experience in the cinema. And so after that, I is when I thought I I, I needed two different cultures and countries. Uh, the first one should be a, a Buddhist one. And and the the other the third one the second one, uh, uh, I wanted a big con cultural contrast, no? and in uh, cultural and landscape and uh, the attitude of the people. So I wanted to make a, like, like a, cele a celebration of the cultural diversity also in, in the film, no? and this is how the the film grew up. That's very interesting that it started from like an aesthetic or formal question and grew into what the film is. Um, how did you uh, how did you establish contact with the two main sets? Mm -hmm. So first, when, when I I decided to uh, to go to Laos uh, because I I I thought in in different countries because I I don't have a a connection. Uh, with any of them so I was more thinking about uh, mainly at the beginning also a place that I was not so shown in cinema no because this is also a, another thing that I wanted I, I wanted in 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 the screen to to show cultures that are not so shown in cinema no and in, in the screens also, my my fear wants to be a uh, a kind of um, uh, I don't find the the, the word now, but uh, against the um, how the Western culture uh, monopolized the screens in, in general. No, so I I, I wanted to show uh, cultures that are not so represented in cinema. No? So I I, I did a, a first travel to to Laos. Uh, to understand more the the place and and to see if it it could work for me and in in this trip is when I discover 
uh, how in the Buddhist temples uh, the the kids and the teenagers lives uh, mainly by themselves. They organize very well by themselves, you know, following very strictly the the rules of the of the temple. But I I was very interested in in this community of kids and, and teenagers. So then I we contact with a, a production company from from Laos. Uh, we have we had a, a an interview with the the master of one of the school temples uh, to to see if they agree to to for us to be there. This was also the the pandemic uh, time, so it was we were the first foreign people entering the country after the pandemic situation. No? So it was very and and the kids uh, and the teenagers were in this temple without going outside for almost two years. No, so it was a, a moment very uh, strange there. Uh, and then uh, in in Zanzibar, I was invited to to give a. Uh, a video art workshop and just after my trip to, to Laos, no, so I, I found it was like a a signal. <laughs> I, I, I fall in love with uh, Zanzibar also, the, the atmosphere, the, the people. And I discovered this the this aspect, the the seaweed farms and how the woman uh, could make some money uh, from that uh, uh, work, uh, also it's a Muslim uh, country, so the contrast also in terms of religion was very big, and I thought it was a nice community to to portray this uh, woman with the seaweed farm. Um, yeah, well, the one one of the reasons I mentioned like how you managed to to create links with the two different places is that one gets the impression that you're very close to the subjects like the it's very intimate so did, did you spend a lot of time in each place with those people yeah. not so much at the at the end because of this also this this situation with uh, with the pandemic in one side uh, also my personal life with uh, two kids uh, one kid in that moment, but and so it was not so so long as I wanted, but it was I think one of the key things was that we were very a, a very small crew from traveling from Spain, just three people and, and me, and the rest of the crew was local people. No, uh, at the end we, we were like main more or less 10 local people in the crew and four local uh, for for foreign people no from spain and that make us uh, enter uh, into the communities uh, in a softer nicer way and also uh, we were with an, an attitude of listening uh, of um uh, we made many many interviews with the people there to understand their their wills, their desires, their fears. You know, like with the with mainly the, the the two communities that I wanted to portray uh, the the kids in the temple and the woman in the seaweed farms. No, they were the two communities that where we get closer. No, I I remember a meeting with the. With the woman of the seaweed farm, uh, it was my my girlfriend uh, breasting my my kid, and they they were all there like with the eyes open, <laughs> and so it was um they understood what what we wanted they they trust on 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 us because uh, we were very worried about uh, this thing that we cannot take us from from us that i'm a european guy going to uh, uh africa and uh, southeast uh, asia you no know? so i have a, a position of power and that you know? so we 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 try to get into the pro into the project many people working with us 
we develop also a, a cinema workshops in, in Zanzibar and they came to the project as assistants. And with the with the people, for example, uh, as is a film that makes documentary and fiction, uh, the part where the dialogues were written, uh, we we saw them with the, the crew, the local crew, and also with the actors many times, not to try to take out as many exotism as possible. No. Um, but that's uh, that's interesting that you were very aware of that. The 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 well, two questions. One, did the people that you filmed see the film itself, the final film? And secondly, have you received any comments about this aspect that you mentioned about the European going to film these different cultures and non-Western places? Yeah, the in in Zanzibar we we. We had the opportunity to show it in a in the Zanzibar Film Festival. So the the actors and the local people were were invited, and and of course I I was nervous. No, you you a filmmaker is always nervous when the the people are going to watch the film. Uh, but they they really love it. The many people they were crying a lot uh, with the with. The, of course, they they are no actors, no. They are the, the the local people, and it was very very nice that that experience. And in in Laos, we we didn't have the opportunity to show it uh, uh, in a in a theater, also because it's not so easy the politic situation there. No, uh, with the script, I had to change the script um, a few times. Because, uh, for example, uh, they didn't want a monk as, a, as the main actor. So I, I had to change the script into two, uh, two actors. Uh, uh, finally, that's something that I think make the, the film better. No? They having the, the monk and the no monk, uh, same age. No? But at the beginning, it was not going to be like that. No? Uh, uh, I wanted uh, the 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 teenager monk uh, to have a conflict about being or not being in in living in the temple as they have, um, but the, the idea of having two actors uh, actors you know, <laughs> uh, came because of the this uh, problem with the government in Laos about you no know, so there was a, a few points where it was a so I sent the with the actors I sent the the link uh, to them and and say uh, they they saw it no uh, the the one that is no monk is is a real rapper there as as they as he explains in the film and and he was a a, a very natural actor he was he always did it good and and he he was uh, very surprised about the the film of course they always with the part with the eyes closed <laughs> they were because they didn't know about that you know when we shoot the film i was saying that we have another part in Zanzibar, but uh, not so much about the the central part of the film no so uh, all of them they were like and and they saw it in a in a computer, no, not, not in a theater, no. That I, is what I wanted, but yeah. But it was it was nice. And about the second question, yeah, uh, mainly mainly in in the U.S. and and in Canada, uh, mainly from the academic world also, uh, this this aspect of the the European going to to film. Uh, away uh, appears always as a as a as a point to be alert, no? Before going to the film, mainly uh, uh, all of, all of the critics after the film they they find the film uh, uh, nice in in the terms of uh, I I did it with with respect. Uh, very involved uh, uh, with the with the people, you no. Know, but always it's something to be alert. As I was as a, a filmmaker, alert 
of trying to not be I don't know everything no cost condescendent uh, the exotism you no know, many many aspects that appear but of course I I came from a culture uh, yeah well actually that uh, when I saw the film and I was thinking about it after I th I, I think there's a there's a there's a logic within the film itself for a third perspective that is kind of required in order to make this universe possible, the one that you created. So that's how I explained it to myself. It, if it would have just been one place, maybe the, yeah. the, the, the issues would have been different, but because you're looking at two different places, it does require kind of an outsider by necessity in some ways to look at these two different things and contrast them and compare them. Yeah, I, I thought about that also, no, I, about, okay, if it's just one place, it could be more, more problematic, but I, I include more places and I, I want to follow the, the feeling more places, no, like following this soul, reincarnating in the future, I, I have the energy <laughs> uh, to make it. Um, uh, because I, I I don't want to speak only about a portrait of this community. No, uh, it's something over. No, like um, yeah. uh, I, I try to me to make uh, some. Yeah, there is a distance there. We are watching this, and maybe maybe when we are watching the the Laos part, as we don't know yet that the the other one is going to appear, but. But when we see Zanzibar, there are always echoes of of Laos, no? And this is what I wanted. For me, it was a. I really wanted to make a, a celebration of the cultural diversity, and and I think it will be really really problematic to to forbid the the curiosity uh, for the other, no? To uh, if we only allow artists, filmmakers, anything to to make um, to have interest or uh, about uh, something that it belongs to to one, the, the universe of one, I think I I I, I think it's very important to to have this uh, multiculturalism, this. Uh, to open the identity to to mix with other identities uh, and and to have this this curiosity i uh, i i grew up and i i think also um, uh, all the crew grow up a lot learning from each other while working together while doing uh, this film uh, to get together no and and i think uh, many spectators will grow up uh, a lot and will be affected and will have uh, yeah about watching also this uh, of course I, I I don't say that is the only thing that we should do I I think it's very important to 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 give the 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 power the money to make their own films about themselves, of course, as we have the, that opportunity. But uh, I think it should be very interesting also a guy from, a filmmaker from Zanzibar to come to Europe to make a film. You know, I saw uh, th this film grow, grows up from also a, a, a very interest about a Jan Roos film. And uh, I saw also one film or a late uh, Jan Root film where he he makes that. No one, uh, I think it's a, a king from Africa goes to Paris and is the is the opposite. No, I think that that words are interesting. No, but yeah, you mentioned uh, already that um, mainly the the film is uh, is acted by non actors. Were there any professional actors involved, or the people involved who are filmed, they are non-actors? The, there is one that uh, used to be actress and is is the the old lady in in Laos. Uh, because there we 
uh, we had uh, it was very difficult to find a, a, a woman that wanted to act as a, a dead woman. Uh, before being Buddhist, they they were uh, an animist uh, religion, and they believe a lot that it will bring uh, bad luck if you act as a, an ill or a dead person. No, uh, so the, the the local producers they didn't want to say that she want she she had to play as a dead person. They they just want they just, they were just saying an ill person and even with that uh, it was impossible to find anyone we find one uh, but the 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 son uh, hear that and forbid her to to play it then we found another one but the the village uh, <laughs> discovered that and they forbid that they say that to compensate that bad luck we they should um uh, kill a buffalo no sacrifice a buffalo no so finally we we went to actresses and even with uh with her with moon uh, we had at the end of the shooting we we did a ritual with with her family and her neighbors uh, to clean this possible bad luck uh, that that could bring and with uh, bracelets and some smoke. It was a, a very beautiful ritual of closing the the shooting. He's the only actor, the actress. Very interesting. It w one of the more complex parts of the film, for me anyway, was the narration. Um, it's it. At some sometimes the film seems to have narrators in the film that appear suddenly and. They act as kind of the the, the anchor of the of the story. Some like uh, for example, the lady who's going to buy the machine for making the seaweed uh, soap. She's almost like conducting a little interview uh, with the person that's uh, selling it. Other times, we're following characters, or in the case of the uh, Sansibar, an animal. And yet, other times. We seem to be kind of a disembodied almost position, just kind of a camera that wanders a little bit here and there away from the action. How did you conceive of the narration yourself when you were making it? How how did you envision the 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 storyteller? Yeah, for yeah, for me it was a a mix of of both, you no, know, and sometimes more fiction. Uh, and we follow the action and the characters. Some other times, a more um, contemplative, um, documentary, uh, sensorial uh, experience. No, so for me, it was a, a mix of a, a documentary portrait of a community, the woman working in the beach, uh, the 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 kids living in the temple. And in, inside that reality, I put, uh, we we make some fiction and action part, no? Like the, the kid that appears from uh, outside of the temple, the, so, and the, the, um, the Buddhist kids that needs to go to another temple with the boat and, and and the, the goat in the other part, no? To I, I wanted also to break the anthropological uh, uh, center and 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 go to a uh, animal. So it was this these two levels, no? So sometimes when we were we go more documentary, we go more out of the action, more the uh, descriptive, and and then. When it's more fiction, we articulate it more uh, classically, you no, know, in terms of fiction film. But the editing process, you had a clear idea of what you wanted to attain as a as a final film, or it's something you built as you went along. Yeah, well, the film is shot in sixty millimeters and low, very low budget, so we didn't. 
we didn't have much. No, uh, I, I couldn't record uh, for a long time. No, I think in total the shooting it was like twelve days in Laos and eight days in Zanzibar. So it was very. So it was more. We have this small minimalistic fiction narrative in both places and then the community to, uh, to portray and so the fiction we suit it like with precision and the more documentary part we we were more open to what we can uh, find or uh, like the the elements because I, I've been uh, living in the temple with the kids for uh, five days, more or less, in the in the place. So I understood their quotidianity. Uh, so I, I I wanted like a, a class uh, when they are with the teacher, uh, the place where they relax and sleep. And you know? so I did a, a script, a documentary script you know, of different points. And then we have the fiction script. And we were going to to do both of them. You mentioned that uh, you went to um, to the locations with a, with a small crew. Who who was part of the crew? the the camera uh, The camera person, and who else? Yes, the the camera person. I I work with two of them because as the film was about this idea of reincarnation, I wanted to uh, to relate with the reality uh, in a different way in both parts no so in the in the first part it was a, a spanish cinematographer and filmmaker my mauro erce and in the second part uh, a british argentinian filmmaker is it, called uh, sara jessica rinland and for her it was the first time being a cinematographer because she, she works just for her films as cinematographer. But I call her because she, she works uh, in her films very nicely uh, with hands. Uh, her films are mainly hands touching things and doing things. And as we were uh, arriving to the Zanzibar part from a very spectral and ethereal part, uh, I wanted to go more tangible again and touch the things again. No? So this is why I, I call uh, Jessica in the in that part. Yeah, the other uh, one, one very important person also is the sound designer uh, is uh, Xavier Erquicia uh, from from Spain. He did also the the direct sound, the the, the recordings in the places and and the middle part, no, with the eyes closed, he he elaborated that, and he also made the, the music uh, in the film, and and then from from Spain also we have one a producer uh, who helps with well uh, with everything, and then the the local local producer that is a, a team of four or five people then the assist assistant in camera two assistants for the camera one assistant for the sound and yeah more people working with us with the with the actors and and that no so yeah so what was behind the choice of uh, shooting it on on film i mean i have to say that it inspired me because it's quite clear that it's film. I mean, not just because you see the the sprocket hole sometimes or the gate, but just the image itself really is different than what you would see in video. And I'm not very good at describing uh, like that that level of technical detail what I saw in the image, but the it was the the image is softer than what you find in video, and the colors are more. They're more saturated, and it gives it the impression almost of a painting, especially like in some scenes. Uh, I, I think the waterfall scene, especially, it, it, you have the impression of a painting. The the the, the, co the color of the water, 
um, the contrast between the different colors uh, that are seen there. I mean, they all seem to be very linked to the format itself that you chose. Um, and the, just a sub question to that is, was it deliberate on your part to make visible that these different kind of impurities, let's call them in the image, hair, dust, seeing the edge of the frame? Yeah, for me, it was the, the first film that I do in, in analog film. Uh, my previous work are all in digital, so <laughs> mainly it was something about this this thing of being new on this that I really like the the errors, no, in the in, in the film the, that I think it makes them very alive, no, and I I like in my previous work also I like very the the painter painting style. Uh, and and the work with the color and and all the, all this so we were very extreme i i did the color correction with the the first dop with mauro erce and and yeah i asked him to to go very uh, pictorial very pictorial no and and with the color try to find something um, extreme no and from the saturation and I think in, in the waterfall part we we found something very very interesting there uh, the waterfall itself has a, a very interesting color very surprising because uh, the the stone is a cal calcareal stone uh, well very a white stone and the 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 water is very pure very uh, but we make it more extreme and also as the as the film uh, many many people in the film are sleeping we 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 see also the overposition of the, the liars sometimes when they are sleeping uh, uh, so i wanted to go little by little to a more oniric uh, aspect no and so in the in that part in the waterfall somehow the oniric and the and the reality mix together no combines uh, also be, because the, the the kid fall asleep then he awakes and and yeah yeah i agree that that's the that there's that uh, kind of how can i say it uh, it um, it feels oniric Partly because I, I can't, I, I was looking at different uh, scenes today. I didn't watch the whole film today, but I watched it uh, a few weeks ago. I didn't want to watch it on the small screen. It's, I, I, start, I watched the first shot on my computer and then I said, no, I, I have to see this on the big screen. <laughs> um, but there's a, I don't know, I can't remember now if before the waterfall scene, there, the there's a kind of this background music that comes in that kind of starts to infiltrate itself into the, mixing itself in with uh, the location sounds and becoming kind of meditative in itself like a meditative kind of music and that gave me the when i was watching it now i just realized okay i when i watched the film i had the impression afterwards that the sound and the image although the, I would hear the sound and it would correspond with what I was seeing. It felt a bit unreal, like um, like if it was recorded separately from the image. Were you able to record a lot in sync or did you record the sound and the images separately? Uh, well, b both of them, but all the... No, when, when we are watching the the image, Everything is in sync, uh, but the sound designer, the sound recorder, uh, he recorded a lot, a lot, because he knew he was going to need sounds for, well, the atmospheres and that, but also for this middle part uh, of the film, no? with the eyes closed. No? So, uh, so he recorded a, a, a lot without image, but with the image, it was everything in, in sync. Uh, as we didn't have much uh, film, I, I did like the clack, 
the clack. I did it just in the monitor, in the digital monitor. So it was more difficult after to make this the sync. But yeah, it, it's in sync. And yeah, I was trying to remember now what is before the waterfall. And before the waterfall is when they travel in the in the boat. That for the the monks, it was the first time in their lives travel going in a boat in the river. So it was very special oh. for them. Yes, okay. yes. Even they, they live very closely, but it's yes, the different situation for them, sadly. Mm. Um, and then um and before that we have a, a musical part that when we see uh, it it ends when they are in the in the classroom with the teacher uh, and they are speaking about the different uh, tribes that lives in and the different languages that they have in in Laos that that something that was important for me also to see that inside Laos there are different cultures, no, like the the and, and in Zanzibar we have the Maasai, no. So it was always there are different cultures inside cultures, no. We are living in a, in a planet with different cultures, living more or less harmonically, or sometimes not not so harmonically. Uh, but no, I, I try to. This was the will of the of the film, no. And inside the countries, there are different cultures, different languages, uh, and even in the same uh, city, we have the monk and the no monk. So, many, it's a huge diversity of ways of living and understand life and death and and the living together and and everything. But well, one part that. Uh that uh, in my opinion went towards um, avoiding exoticism is the presence of phones in the film that which are very prominent where you wouldn't expect it let's say in this type of film that would try to make try to create a kind of a separate paradise or a separate place this was a deliberate choice on your part to integrate this into the film it was impossible to uh, to avoid the, the the thing we and of course I I included also because I without the presence of the telephones, uh, someone could could think that uh, this film was shot uh, twenty years ago or, or thirty years ago. No, also because of the sixty millimeters texture. No, and. Uh, but the reality of the the teenagers in the temple is that they cannot go out of the temple as they want. They they need a reason, no, and 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 so they allow them to have a telephone. They don't have Wi-Fi in the temple because otherwise they will be connected all all the time because they don't. They are not allowed to play any sport, to play music. Uh, so there are many things. That could make during the stay there uh, that cannot no. So the telephone is a way to go out of this reality for a moment, and and all of them are, are with the telephone all all the time the, that they can. No? Uh, you mentioned that um, that this was your first film using celluloid. Uh, it presented some limitations for you in terms of the how long you could shoot different shots. The, the first shot of the film I th maybe is the longest in the film. I'm not sure. Um, it is okay. Uh, and uh, after watching the first scene, I had the impression, okay, this is going to be a lot of long takes, a bit slower than than uh, than what it turned out to be, because the editing gets a bit quicker. But was this uh, preference on your part to to have uh, shorter shots, or was it because of the film limitation itself that created its own structure, its own rhythm in the editing? You had you had to you had to be more economical in the in your shooting. Yes, I I I, I had to. The thing is that I, I decided to to go to celluloid also because I I wanted to change my method my my way of shooting. Uh, I used to work from an, an accumulation of images 
and then finding the film afterwards. Uh, and and here I, I I wanted to to think better the the film that I I I want to do and the images that I want to 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 film and be more precise. No, so this is why I I I decided also. Of course, as I wanted to talk about some spiritual ethereal aspect of the reality, uh, the celluloid. The palpitation of the celluloid works better in in, the, in that direction also, no. But mainly it was because I wanted to change my my method, and so um, I I didn't thought at, at the beginning about uh, this first shot uh, to be the first one of the image. I, I I wanted to shoot it, but it was not. But when I I did it, I I I thought it was perfect for the starting of the film also because everybody is with the eyes closed that is the same thing that i'm going to ask to the audience uh, half uh, 45 minutes after after that image no so it was like this idea of the echoes no and also the idea of the eyes closed uh, appears many times in the film no we are starting thanthiba with the, with the girl sleeping and she wake up so uh, the idea of the uh, bardo, no, that is the this space between uh, uh, death and reincarnation, the after afterlife. Uh, also in, in in Buddhism, there are other bardos, no, that is a, a different state of conscience, and and dreaming is another bardo, uh, and and well, some some others, no. And so, so I wanted to start put meditation is another state of bardo. So I, I wanted to include uh, little by little this idea of the a different state of mind. How did the um, how did the fact you shot it on film impact the way you edited the the film? Is it different than when you edited it on video? I know we can transfer film images to video and use the same video editors that we use normally, but did, was your approach different? It's different, but because the material that you get is is different, no? Uh, it's, it's not, it's shorter, uh, uh, so it, it's different because of, of that. Uh, just speaking about my my films, here is more that that here I have a a script more articulated, uh, and before I had just a list of images and situations that I wanted to shoot, and I have to put them in order, find the order. No, so th that was the the main difference in in terms of the the duration and and the contemplative experience. Um, it affects more in the shooting, no? In the in the editing, of course, I try to mm, uh, expand as as ma uh, to the maximum the length of the shoot, no? Because uh, I I'm interested in, uh, in in trying to find an intimate experience from a. Uh, uh, long duration or a calm rhythm no yeah how how would you characterize the rhythm of the film um and just overall were you try were you very conscious of trying to create a specific kind of a rhythm to the film or not or it came it was more intuitive um i i think i I have a, a sense of the rhythm uh, that I it, it, it's been uh, building from film to film. No, uh, I think, and I think the sensitivity of a, a filmmaker mainly can appears here in the sense of the rhythm, and 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 here maybe at sometimes with some images. I I found that I had to be faster than I wanted because of the material. Maybe at some points, 
but um, yeah, for for me, the it's very important. The I I don't want um, the film the the images appear just and as an illustration of of the narrative. Uh, I want the the viewer to be able to habit uh, to to live in the film in the in, in the landscape in the image and the image so we we need to to give enough time for the view of the spectator to go to the image and come back you know, and 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 to the image to see that the the image can see you know, and 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 the viewer feel that the image is looking to them you no know? Uh, here appears the the idea of the aura. No, aura is in English. Is the same word. Oh, oh. Aura. No, it, it's when no. I, I I learned this very when I was uh, very very young with my fa my parents. They are both painters, and and he took I don't know like a, a pencil. No, he he took a a glass of water, and he told me. Look to the uh, to the glass. No, no. Look longer. Look longer. Look longer. No. And suddenly the glass appears like something very weird. No. And and that that uh, lesson affects me a lot. No. Well, that lesson is actually represented in the film and the scene where the two boys yes. are looking at the tree. Yes. And uh, I had exactly the experience you described. The longer I looked at the tree, the more I started to see things beyond the tree and even felt the tree. It was a strange experience. Uh, it's the first time that uh, someone to, uh, tell me that, but I, I try hardly. And, 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 and this is one moment when I felt that I didn't have uh, enough uh, uh, image of the tree. Uh, you know, because as I wanted the viewer to have that experience as as Amid is, is having, and I had to do a, a trick of overposition with the tree to make it longer because I didn't have enough material. No? Ah, okay, that's interesting. Yes, I, I, I had to I, do it like... <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> um, the the it's very interesting what you're saying because now we're getting into some of the more detailed questions that I wanted to ask about the spectator experience, which is you're trying to create a spectator experience. And in fact, if I use myself as a reference and the people I was watching the film with, uh, we all felt that it was an experience-oriented film. And uh, I was talking about actually to my brother about it and. Uh, I mentioned that at one point in the film, I I dozed off a little bit, maybe I don't know, thirty seconds, when the when the boy himself falls asleep in the film, and uh, there's a kind of a dream dreamlike sequence with a different uh, tone, where we wander off into the the forest a little bit and we hear the sounds of the water. Uh, myself, uh, like I fall asleep typically with that kind of sound. I, I'm still like a baby, I guess, in that regard. I, I like the sound of rivers and things like that when I fall asleep. Um, when I was discussing it afterwards, we all concluded that you were trying to create an analogous experience to what the content of the film is about, which is a kind of a transcendental experience of reincarnation you're looking for the spectator to have a comparable experience throughout the film, except in the middle part, which is a different kind of experience. Well, I want to talk about that after, but I'm talking before and after the middle sequence, there's a feeling of, of being a, in a meditative state throughout, throughout all these images. You were trying to construct this experience for the viewer? Yeah, yes, absolutely. I... And this is something that I, I I try to work in in general in my films. Uh, at the beginning, I was not so conscious about about this, and so it was more uh, I was doing the films in an intuitive way and that contemplative. At the beginning, I, I thought it was this contemplative cinema, a contemplative experience. But of course, the contemplation and the meditation 
is al almost the if if go if both goes deep is is the same experience no very similar no? and but since a couple of years ago i i understand that i'm very interested in that and i so i i try to go through 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 that no and and explore the possibilities of cinemas uh, meditative and intimate uh, experience experience introspective uh, experience so uh, yes for, for me the, the the whole film it was a a, a, med a meditative experience but of course the, the middle part is different is at some points more aggressive of course you we are trying to bring you to the, ex the experience of death no so it's, it's harder no and and many people in that part exp express me uh, some a, a buddhist uh, a belie believers that saw the film found it really uh, no many, many people told me that they were crying at that part and so it was really intense for them no? It is very intense, and I'm going to ask you a question about it in a second, but I just wanted to f finish about the editing process. Do you have, how did you work with the sound while you were editing? Was it determining a, the rhythm of your editing, or did you do the editing of the images first and then put the sound after? Yeah, I'm I'm more a, a visual filmmaker. No, I, I came... To cinema from photography, you no, know, as others came from theater or literature. For me, it was from from the image. Maybe, maybe also as my uh, from photography and painting. You no, know, as my pa my parents both are painters. Uh, this film it was really strange the editing process um, by necessity or so it was very hard to make the sync of the. Uh, sound and image because I I did the thing with the, just the digital monitor, no not in the celluloid, so I can save a little bit of the uh, film. Uh, so I decided not to make the sync. So I did a first uh, cut of the whole film without sound, no sound at all. Then and and it work it no then i think only the the images that i use in the film so not the others so i i save a little bit of effort with the sign uh, but without understanding what they are saying in the documentary uh, speaking no in the fiction part i was trusting that they were saying uh, what was in the script and and my the 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 local uh, crew that we have in the in the film uh, help help me to to do that be because me, most of them they didn't speak English just the the uh, monk um, protagonist the main character uh, he spoke English because I choose him because he spoke English no because the the two hundred people in the temple there were four for teenagers that spoke English, no? So well, I took one. Uh, but so after this first editing without sound, I did one with sound, but without uh, subtitles of what they were saying in, in, in the dialogues. Then I sent to translate all that, that parts and I did a new editing with, with all the elements already with me. Uh, I did, uh, I work a lot the the sound. I, I have all the archives that the sound designer record and I work um, to have the atmosphere that I wanted there that finally is more or less what he what he did but better no but in the the tone, the rhythm and the atmosphere uh in, in terms of sound uh, I did it also. In, in the past with the eyes open, when when we have the eyes closed, uh, the, it's, it's a different way how how he worked the the sound that we can go deeper after if you want. Yeah, I, there is one question 
before I asked about the middle section, the first shot, the pan of the kids in the temple, I mean, uh, the, in the background you hear different sounds like, uh, I, I can't identify what it is. It sounds like a bug or bugs chirping. I, it's hard to know what it is, but it, it really triggers a, a state of already meditation, the sound of that first scene. What, what is the, what are, what are those sounds? He he found a, a little uh, some water uh, with uh, frogs uh, next to the temple, so it was not the real sound of the that the while we were shooting, but it is like one hundred meters, you no? Know? And he recorded that sound, and when I was checking the ambient sound that he recorded, I found this one. I knew that he recorded there because he told me like, oh, I found this this sound and it's very special. And I I, I put it there and yeah, it, it brings you to a, a, a rhythm, no? Yeah, it is a very special uh, sound. And uh, well, there, there are some, the, there's a kind of a type of uh, video content, audiovisual content that is now produced and is fairly recent, the production of it, which is, are you familiar with ASMR videos? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, before, they were not produced deliberately, they were just found in films, and spectators would say, oh, this scene kind of puts me in this kind of state. The, 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 the experience itself is described differently according to each spectator, but some people feel a bit sleepy by what they're, by the rhythm of the, of the sound or certain kinds of sounds. And uh, your film definitely has scenes that are like that. Like the, like I said, the one in the river, the first shot is like that. Uh, the middle part is not like that at all. Um, and actually, well, now we can talk about this middle part because I think it's the first film, uh, or the first scene I've ever, I've ever seen, I think, in my life that attempts to make a film in the eyelids of the spectator. And um, because that's what it feels like. Because if you do close your eyes, I did open them a couple of times just to see what was going on. But when you close your eyes, the images are, the light is flashing on the screen and different colors are appearing. It does create its own little mm -hmm. film experience inside of the eyelids. How did you come up with this uh, with this idea? Yeah, it, it was a uh, so when I was exploring this idea of the invisible, I decided to make a, a film to 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 watch with the eyes closed, and I don't know in which moment, but after probably one year, I I thought about this. No, I I. It was not directly influenced at that moment from the what is called um, the dream machine, uh, but I knew about about the dream machine. No? The dream machine is is something that in the beat generation and William Barrows uh, use it several times. Uh, they create like a lamp. Uh, that that I don't know the the name in English, but it has holes, uh, and the holes were were turning. So they put uh, in front of the lamp, and sometimes the light appears. Sometimes it was blocked. No, uh, pa, 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 pa. and and they use it. They use them as a uh, to try to take out from drugs, <laughs> no? or uh, or something a similar experience to the drug experience. No? It's called the, the dream machine. Uh, I really uh, like, uh, I, I, and it's very inspiring for me, also the, the work of uh, James Turrell uh, with, with his uh, a light art. Do you know James Turrell? He, he's, a, he, he's a light artist. He works with um, what he, he creates, a light spaces, no? So for example, I saw a couple of works in, in LA 
uh, you enter, you, you have to take out your shoes, you enter in a white space, and at the end, there is a infinite space of light and, and color. No? Uh, this word, for example, was called uh, light breathing. And 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 the the light you don't see anything just a, a, a light no the, but you don't know how far it is how it's infinite and so in in this one the light was going up and going down no fade in fade out very very slowly and the color changing very slowly also so you you were feeling that that you were inspiring no you breathing light the, the the light was going inside you and out of you or also that the light was breathing itself no and it, and it was really 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 powerful work and very spiritual very meditative and working with with sound no? here is different the way i, I work because it was more a flicker uh, but and and the the retinian persistence, <laughs> la persistencia retiniana, mm. about, about light. and it changed a lot. When I was editing it, uh, I was, of course, in darkness, and I was exploring how was the experience with, I don't know, uh, two frames of light, two frames of no light, five frames of light, five frames of no light, one, 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 one. It, it changed a lot, the experience, if just with these little changes no? and i work on that do you uh do you inform spectators that there's going to be a scene that has this kind of dimension to it beforehand uh, the the festivals uh, decide if they want to do it or or not because the film itself says that you have to close your eyes <laughs> if, if you don't close them <laughs> Um, uh, of course, epileptic people, I think, can can have a problem. Uh, at the beginning, the reading is uh, slow, but at the end, it's fast and it's powerful. Uh, so if you have your eyes open at that part, I think if you have epileptic, you, you can. Uh, in, in Berlinale, when was the premiere, they inform about that and they say, it. and in most of the festivals, they are saying it, I think. What has been the spectator reaction to your film? Like when you talk to people and what, what, what kind of things do they say about the film? Yeah, they are, they are very, very touched. I, for me, it was, I, I didn't expect something so, I, I was happy with, with the film and I knew, I knew it was something quite, quite new or quite original and, and can be go deep on on people with at least my sensitivity uh, but it was amazing the it exists this thing called a letterbox when people whoever wants to speak about the film so you go to samsara and they speak and so you can see reaction from all over the over the world all, all the the film the countries where samsara was a screen I can go there and see their reactions, no, and and the people that connect with with the film uh, is really really touched. And just the in the first screen in Berlinale, two people stand up and to say that they will never forget the the experience in their lives, no, and and many yeah, also in that in that in that in that projection, one woman come to me uh, that uh, her her mom was dying and and told me about well the, the her way to relate with that and how the film helped her uh, for that moment and and that no so also in in the way of re reflecting about death and uh, because I, I I take in the film uh, this attitude of uh, um, mm, I don't know how to express no, but but be being calm with the death process. Yeah, no, that comes across. Um, there is one uh, part of the middle part 
what do you what do you how do you refer to the middle part? Do you, you have, do you give it a special name? No, eyes close, middle part. Yeah. Okay, the eyes close, middle part. It's clear we're going through a kind of a you know a kind of a traveling, okay, of some kind through at some point maybe a forest, a jungle. But there's a part that left me wondering what it was about because. There, you hear the sound of a man and a girl, I believe, and they're, they're speaking Spanish or Portuguese. I could not tell what, what it was. It's Italian. Where, what is that part? Where did you film that part? Mm -hmm. So what I, I told the Xavier Erquizia, the sound designer, is that I, I wanted two, two parts there. Uh, so the first middle, we we are following more or less uh, not, not all of the, uh, the the sounds described in the book in the Tibetan Book of Death. Uh, they say you will hear a storm, you will hear a thunder, you will hear no M many sounds. Uh, so what uh, uh, Sabir did was a, a poetical uh, travel through some of these sounds describe them and then in the second part uh, i i wanted to um, uh, to show uh, sounds from different places in the world no so sabir uh, erquizia in his during his year working he recorded uh, sounds in many different places and he worked with different atmospheres there. No? I, I wanted to try to evoke uh, images in the spectator, like if they were um, play, uh, places where uh, the soul could be tempted uh, to reincarnate, no? Yeah, that's, uh, that is, that is, that's how I read the images that uh, the kind of the soul is traveling around looking for a place to land and then it lands in 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 the goat in, in the little baby goat yeah um now i'm getting to the final questions i, I don't want to take too much of your time but um the again the the to come back to the narrative mode of the of the film it seems often that the film is attempting like to explain what reincarnation is but almost for like for children, because the the children in the film they occupy that they're often listening to what an elderly person is saying about reincarnation. There's the kids at the temple, and I guess for me it's a film I could show technically my children, and it would it's kind of explain it explains things in, in in some way. It has a a didactic uh, component to it, um, but there is one scene. And I mean, it's the last scene of the film, or as we get close to the last scene of the films, but there's a kind of things turn a little bit darker at that moment. I mean, there's a I'm worried about that goat, especially there's some sounds off screen that are coming that seem a little bit uh, supernatural. Let's call them. Well, how would you characterize the this last sequence within the 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 the, the theme of the film and what you were trying to accomplish? Uh... You mean the the, the the very last scene in the cave? We're getting close, yeah, but, but there's it's leading up to it. Uh, once the goat is separated from the girl, the, the goat is gradually moving away, away into some mysterious, dark, um, a bit scary, uh, scary situation. Yeah, for for me, well, the the goat is uh, is is very frightened. No, is is very afraid of uh, she's by by herself and not knowing where she is lost from everyone and so he sees a scare and and yeah for me in the script i i wanted to create the situation where we can think that the goat could die no and and so it's we are putting into the uh, the skin of the goat, and we are going to that uh, 
a scary situation. No? So we, we go there. No? And yeah, again, working a lot with the sound space and uh, of the goat. No? Also, the sound designer uh, uh, make a research on how the goats hear, <laughs> but they hear very in a very narrow way. <laughs> And we didn't do wanted to do that in the in the film, but um, so we go into her experience, no there, and yeah. be before that be uh, the cave that is the last uh, scene. We have the more didactical uh, sequence in in the film, no that is this uh, conversation between the mother and the girl when she explains mainly the. <laughs> the goal of the film, no? trying to uh, show the different perspective uh, of death and dying in different cultures. No? Yeah, because the, uh, did you get some reaction from children who saw the film? Or did children see the film that, that you spoke with? The, the, the two girls, the, the main character, and, but the problem, but uh, I I I didn't I, I wasn't in in Zanzibar because my my new <laughs> baby was getting born in the same date, uh, so I couldn't talk with with the two girls uh, about how they feel and and what they understood about or how they react about what yeah what what was the feeling and. Um, or the idea that get on there on them and yeah no i didn't speak with any kids yet about this uh, i'm very curious to know what the children uh, think about it because getting back to the question of rhythm uh which is an important part of the kind of research we want to do i, I kind of felt at different times because of the introduction of the phone technology at different moments in the film that there is a contrast also at this level, not just between the two cultures, but between modern rhythm and something more traditional or more rural or something at this level. Because everybody feels or has the sense that everything is so fast now that the spaces that you chose to film, they're by nature, they, they might, that the rhythm of life is slower. Was this a deliberate also on your part to create this contrast, not just between the cultures, but between like the present and the past? Like the the, the present and and the past and and the city and the natural space. Uh, mm, I think it's something that I I have more interiorized. It was an I know that I I'm interested in, in in proposing this kind of experience in in my film. So it was not something I was not thinking about a present and and past. And and here I was I was interested or surprised me at the beginning that this idea of no that this film we are see, seeing the the people. The, the 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 Buddhists in the temples in 2022 or 21 uh, but if we recorded in uh, in the 80s probably it would be the same the only difference is the telephone no and the rhythm will be the same so this is present I like the idea that people understand that the film this film was shot in 2000 no it was shot in 2022 no mm. it seems very the, that is the past because it's the past of the western culture somehow no but i i, I think it's important to and and it's the past not in the sense of the uh, pro, uh, progressive line no is the past chronologically no but it could be the, our future no if we uh so it was more about yeah reflecting, uh, of course reflecting about the the, the rhythm uh, and mainly that the external rhythm, rhythm, the internal rhythm that we live in. No? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was actually trying to 
when you when when I, when I walked out of the film, I told my brother, um, "The film is asking you to make a commitment, a commitment that you're going to spend the time that you need to watch this film." And this commitment to me is a very important part of the film experience. And in today's context, with everybody looking at little images all the time on their phone and very quickly in 30 second clips, the, the experience of seeing your film, or any film really, but yours especially, is that it feels like you're being asked to calm down. And it takes some time to get into that rhythm of the film because we're used to speed. So like today when I arrived quickly and things were not technically yet and I was printing my questions, I mean, this is the speed of life. But then when you sit down and you commit to watching the film, there's a, there's a moment of time where you're adapting to this new rhythm that you're, you're observing on the screen and it's very, it feels very good. And this is part of what we're trying to explore as research questions here is what are the health benefits, let's call it, uh, of watching films? Because there seems to be something there that is valuable, especially in, in today's context. And, and, um, and, and the, the second point I would just like to say about your film is that it doesn't just create a mental experience, it creates a physical experience, especially in the middle section. I remember very distinctly when I was sitting in this middle section, the sound was like much like higher. We we didn't change the volume, you know. I didn't have a remote control, <laughs> so I was like thinking, okay, I'm in my university. We have a theater here. Is everybody going hearing this? I mean, it was kind of an out of body experience because it's so loud, almost to the point of you know, like I said, you physically feel the scene itself, and plus the light show that's happening in the eyelids. Um. I, th that was more just a comment on my part that, uh, about how I fit this film into the landscape of our modern culture and visual culture. It's kind of a, an antidote somehow to the speed of what we normally are used to watching in films. And this aspect of commitment, when I mention it to my brother, it says, well, in the, in the film itself, the characters are committing themselves to a life of a meditative life, a, a spiritual life, a religious life. There's something there at this level to me that uh, that this film creates as well. Um, well, I, 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 I was it more a comment on my part of appreciation uh, for for your film. I I I I I find that my my films are a a, a kind of resistance to the acceleration. Yeah. Uh, of the the rhythm in in life, no, I I don't I don't do the films in this way because of that. I I, I do it because it's my way of being in the world. Uh, but I know they they can be a, a resistance place for that. No, and this is also uh, this this commitment that that you speak and. And before you say that the, the, the first image is the is the longest one. So many times in, in, I, I, I do that in my films. The, the, the first image is the longest uh, because you create a, 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 a trade. Uh, no? and, and if you could resist this first, now the rest will be easier because it's going to be faster. No? And so you create expectations. And then after that ex expectation that are hard, then it, it goes softer. <laughs> that, that's very interesting. That, that's a really important comment, uh, in my opinion. Thank, thanks for sharing that. Um, do you have any questions for me, Luis? No, no. I, I'm, I'm really happy to of having your your opinion and your reactions oh. about about the film because it. It helps me a, a lot to un understand the, the film. I, I didn't travel so much with the film uh, yet because yeah, my family situation with uh, with two ki little kids. Uh, but uh, but I I really happy to have no as, as I think it's a, a very open film with many things to talk about. I am very happy. Yeah, I, one of the worries that I had was similar to one worry you had when you were doing your filming, 
which is I didn't want you to feel like I'm taking your film just to talk about something else. You know, I didn't want to, I want to integrate it organically into the discussion. So all of this discussion about the rhythm of life, the spectator experience, your deliberate attempt to create a, a unique kind of experience for the spectators, to me points towards um, what we're going to be discussing after the film. More so, I think, than let's say the, the subject matter itself of reincarnation, even though that itself has its own rhythmical structure that is incorporated into the form of the film. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure with you that uh, you felt comfortable with me talking about it in a different context than the normal, let's say. Yes, 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 absolutely. Bueno, muchas gracias Luis por todo.